great. Welcome back to this tutorial series, Fix API for Algorithmic Traders. And today we'll be talking about the anatomy of the Fix protocol, following on from the first presentation where we went through a general, more higher level overview of the Fix protocol, its pros and cons to algorithmic traders, and specifically the Fix API offering at DarwinX, what it entails, how and when it may become necessary for algorithmic traders to use it, etc. In terms of today's agenda, we'll be going through the Fix protocol architecture. Uh, we'll be discussing session and application layers, types of connections available to you when you're using the Fix API, followed by talking about the building blocks of Fix messages, including message structure, layer order, and component tags. And we'll conclude with discussing what future tutorials could entail in terms of topics, subject matter, and anything that comes up between now and those future tutorials. So without further ado, let's begin, starting with Fix protocol architecture. Fix application infrastructure involves two major layers of communication, and these are called session and application. And the session layer deals with initialization, maintenance, and termination of connections, as well as handshaking between parties, data integrity, message delivery, and sequencing, which is very important in several use cases when using the Fix API. The application layer deals with use cases such as order creation, cancellation, order replacement, etc., business specific functions, um, and also includes subscribing to market data, processing and parsing execution reports, etc. In fact, there are two types of connections that need to be implemented, both for different use cases. The pricing connection, where SSL connectivity isn't usually required, uh, is where you can subscribe to real-time market data for all assets available via the connection. And the second type of connection is trading, where SSL is usually required and can be achieved via tunneling software. In terms of the building blocks of fixed messages, let's go through message structure to start with. All fixed messages are text only, they're NASCII text, and follow a certain definition. The contents of a fixed message are put together using fields and associated values, and each field has a certain definition. This definition includes a name, number, and data type of the specific field in question. For example, for the begin string field, the number associated with the field, the tag, is 8, and the data type of this field is string. So when you see a tag, for example, that says 8 equals fix.4.4, .4, this is the first component of a fixed message in the standard header that we'll discuss shortly that is indicating to the recipient that the protocol in play, the protocol version in play here is fix 4.4. Each fixed message is composed of a sequence of such tag value pairs, the tag being the field and the value being the corresponding value associated with that field in the pair, exactly like the example above where it says eight equals fix point four point four, where the tag is eight, the tag number is eight, the, the definition name of the tag is begin string, and the data type of the tag is string, hence the fix point four point four. In the overall sequence of tag value pairs that comprise the message, each tag value pair is delimited by an ASCII control character, and that is 0x01. An example message is displayed here for your reference, but don't worry if it seems unworldly and uh, difficult to understand because we will go through the exact structure of this message, after which all the constituent components, the various tag value pairs, will make a lot more sense. Tags used in a fixed message must not appear more than once unless they are being specified in a repeating group. And repeating groups is something that we will be covering in future tutorials. Now, having looked at this long string, starting at 8 equals fix point four point four, ending at 10 equals 054, it's all well and good to look at this long string, but it would make a lot more sense were we to visualize the overall structure of any fixed message, and that is composed of three main layers, as we will see now. The three layers, they have to be in this particular order, starting with the standard header of a message, followed by the message body, and ended with the standard trailer. Now, these three components form the entire message in total. We'll go through all of these in specific detail as we go along in this tutorial series. But for now, to make sense of this long string, 
it's good to visualize how this string is actually constructed and what tags go in what parts of the overall message that we're composing at any given time, depending on the use case, depending on what we want to do. Is it market data we're subscribing to? Is it a new order we're trying to send? Is it something else? Is it a test request? Is it a heartbeat, etc.? All of these concepts will become known as we progress further in this tutorial series. Followed by the standard header is the message body. And in this message body, you have to specify a sequence of tag value pairs, depending on the type of instruction you're trying to send along. So this will also become clear in future tutorials where we go about message construction. But for now, all we need to understand in order to interpret this long string of characters, symbols, and digits is that it has an overall structure to it, and that has these three components, the standard header, followed by the message body, and finally the standard trailer, which includes one tag, the checksum value. To put this into uh, more of a visual, let's take a look at how this fixed message when transposed into a table uh, with its associated tag numbers, descriptions, values, and value descriptions, what it actually looks like. So now we know that the overall message is composed of a standard header, message body, and standard trailer. Let's take a further, more detailed look into what those actually those components actually represent. On the right-hand side of your screen, you see a screenshot with a tag uh, with a column for tag number, another for description, value, and value description, all the way to transaction time at the very end uh, before checksum constitutes the message body we're looking at here. The sequence of tag value pairs depending on the message type being sent by the application. So in this particular case, without having gone into the details of message types and particular order types, handling uh, instructions, etc., cetera, which, which our subjects will cover in future tutorials in this series, we can ascertain immediately from looking at this screenshot that the text string on the left-hand side is in fact composed of a standard header, message body, and trailer, whereby the first values specify that the fixed protocol version being used is 4.4, that the body length is 110, and that the message type in this case is D, which, as we'll cover in future, stands for order single. All remaining components, all the way through to transact time, the second last row in this table, constitute the message body. And finally, the standard trailer, is the checksum value, which in this case is 054, but this is incorrect as we have changed the sender comp ID and target comp ID values. Again, subjects for future tutorials, but for now, it's easier to visualize a fixed message in general now that we know what the layering of a fixed message actually is. There are certain message types that we'll cover in tutorials in this series that can take multiple values. For instance, you see the message type 35 tag on the right-hand side highlighted in green that can take multiple values. And each of those multiple values signifies something different to the fixed server you're sending this message to from your client application. Examples include D being new order single, zero being a heartbeat, one being a test request, etc. All concepts will be explained in detail as we progress further in this series. Now, taking that text string and uh, deconstructing it into the specific layers they belong to makes the message stand out a bit more, as we just discussed by looking at the screenshot. So just to repeat over here, we've taken the long string that I've put at the top of this slide for you, 8 equals fix 0.4.4, etc., all the way through to the checksum value, broken it down into its components by layer. So in future tutorials, we'll be discussing and describing in detail the anatomy of any fix API application, how to set up a Python 3 environment for trading via fix at DarwinX, installing and configuring the Quick Fix Engine, which you can read up more on at quickfixengine.org, and we'll be programming. We'll be programming entire fix applications during this tutorial series. We'll develop fixed pricing clients, fixed trading clients, but all the information that we learn, all the knowledge we put together here in this tutorial series and implement it in the form of programming exercises that will be fully functional and allow you to communicate uh, with your respective credentials and anything else that comes up between now and then that is of importance. So for instance, we've been talking a lot about things that we're not going into detail in this particular tutorial, such as message types, order types, things like that. What values can the message type 
30, tag 35 field take? What values can the order type tag 40 take, etc., etc.? Side symbol, how do I specify a symbol? What is the format for specifying a symbol? What it does, what is the difference between transact time and sending time? And all those sorts of questions that come up when you take a look at this string and then take a look at its more descriptive version on the right hand side, all of these questions will be addressed. Uh, so hopefully this has been uh, educational in terms of taking a fixed message, deconstructing it into its components, and removing the initial difficulty that one may experience having to look at a fixed message. Because fix is for more advanced practitioners and people who are looking to benefit from algorithmic traders who are looking to benefit from the pros that fix API implementations do bring to the table. But also primarily for people who have programming experience or have access to programmers who can develop implementations using the fix api for them so it's certainly a degree harder than uh, using a trading platform or implementing trading algorithms in stock languages such as for for instance metatrader 4 or 5 with their stock mql language or in any other programming language even python or r for that matter uh, fix because it's a protocol in itself is language agnostic but because of the various moving parts and components that need to be constructed appropriately for a fixed message to be valid uh, there is a lot of information to be learned and the purpose of this tutorial series is to impart all of that knowledge alongside imparting knowledge on how to go about constructing and programming a fixed client for both pricing and trading activity. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.